you all for being here. We are really excited uh, to be reopening Mill Mason today. My name is Linda Johnson. I'm the president and CEO of Brooklyn Public Library, and it is an honor to welcome you back. Um, and I want to thank a few people before we get started with the program. Um, to my right, the great councilman, Alan Mazel. And Marlene Cooper from New York State Senator Roxanne Fasolfo. These elected officials are big supporters of Brooklyn Public Library. I see people nodding, it's very true. Um, and they um, helped us reach this important day. So I would also like to thank um, Oscar Gonzalez from DDC, the Assistant Commissioner there. And we're honored to be joined this morning by James Neal, who I don't see. He's right, right here. Right here. Hi. <laughs> who is the president of the American Library Association. And Lauren Camuto. She's, she's standing in the back. Sorry, how could I miss you? Anyway, thank everybody. Welcome Lauren back because she is the new branch manager here. And you'll be seeing a lot of her if you're uh, a loyal uh, Mill Basin patron. We have some other great guests today who I can hear um, behind you all. Um, they are first and second graders from PS236, along with their principal, um, Sal Pinkanker. Um, Antoinette Labe Labella, parent coordinator and member of the PTA. Um, welcome back to everybody from um, to PS236. So the original library um, here uh, was actually opened in 1940 with a deposit station at the Austin Pharmacy, proving once again that a good book can make you feel better. We moved to this location and today we begin anew with not only a fresh coat of paint, but a wholly reconfigured space, which is both bigger and brighter, has new lighting, new signs, new shelving and furniture, including computing tables and seating. And I saw some really adorable little pig and elephant um, chairs for the kids, which I want to try out myself. Um, <laughs> and um, there's also, which perhaps is most exciting for our youngest patrons, um, a children's section with um, interactive um, uh, walls and bookshelves and furniture um, and a learning wall. But what you can't see, but for us um, is really important, is the new heating and air conditioning system and the city and the community rely on us as a cooling station in the summer, so it's nice that we can actually fulfill that mission as well. Um, we, um, no matter what the season, or rather what the weather, um, we really never want to close. And so it's great to have this new and brighter space, um, and that will be always be the right temperature, regardless of the time of year. You'll be able to come here to read, to study, just to enjoy each other's company, um, and to um, take, uh, participate in programs, which I understand will start again this afternoon. And uh, so before I turn the podium over to our guests, I'd like to thank the staff of Mill Basin. <laughs> they worked really hard um, uh, to make this day happen, uh, both before and during the closure, and as we prepare to reopen today. And to the library, planning, uh, capital planning facilities, and public safety teams who did an outstanding job preparing and securing the branch. Thank you, gentlemen. As many of you know, I'm sure, we had to close late in the summer of 2016 when the air conditioning uh, completely failed. Uh, and it was new city capital funds and the support of this branch's councilman that made it happen for us to get a new system and to reopen today. So it is my great pleasure to welcome the library lover, to welcome library lover Story, um, and Councilman Alan Mazel to say a few words. Good morning. It's a wonderful day. Uh, believe me, I'm delighted uh, that the library is open. Uh, I can tell you that uh, one of the most um, frequent complaints that my office received over the last year or so was the fact that the library is not uh, open. When is it going to open? And what I said to the people at the time was, everything that happens is expensive. The HVAC system was 
two million dollars maybe it was extremely expensive and uh, whenever you're doing a project uh, there are unknown uh, things that have come up that sometimes make these projects take even longer but uh, it's open now and uh, this library has been a linchpin to the community I think we also need to uh, pay some uh, mention some tribute to the person who actually was responsible for this library in the first place uh, a lady by the name of Dorothy Russo uh, I doubt very much if anybody in the library now remembers her except maybe Paul curiosity oh, from Mill Basin. She was the president of the Mill Basin Civic and she was also a member of the community board. And Dorothy Russo probably single-handedly got the elected officials at the time, uh, Monroe Cohen who was the councilman and uh, Stanley Fink was the assemblyman and she got the money for this gorgeous building. But uh, that's uh, 40, 50 years ago and um, buildings get old and get tired and if the money doesn't come in to replace the things that have to be replaced it fails, you know, just like people. If we don't uh, keep up with our uh, prostheses and all that, we're gonna fail too. So I'm delighted that uh, Dorothy's uh, vision is uh, better than ever. And uh, I'm going to finish with by saying, I used to be a library teacher, so libraries are, have a special meaning for me. And just look around. This is not your grandmother's or grandfather's library. There are so many different things from the uh, videos, from the uh, computers, the interaction uh, areas with the children. This is a place where the people of this community and other communities go to take care of a lot of things. Job hunting and uh, not everybody has a computer. So this library is so important and I'm so glad that I could be part of uh, the effort to restore it to its original glory. Thank you, Lindy Johnson, for all your hard work and the librarian. welcoming Oscar Gonzalez from the Department of Design and Construction who had so much to do with the project. Uh, I remember uh, growing up, um, you know, having to uh, go to school and visit libraries that didn't have any heat and, uh, you, know, you know, sometimes dealing with the air conditioners and the windows and other Does everybody remember those uh, air conditioners in the window? Um, you know, they were, they were a distraction and, you know, we had to overcome those distractions um, uh, so, you, know, you know, get around them and, and, and really try and focus on your education. Well, we don't have, that, we don't have to worry about that anymore. You know, we got a very good HVAC system here. We have very few distractions, and we can really focus on our education, our extended, extended education that our libraries provide. Uh, the Department of Design and Construction is proud to be reopening the Mill Basin branch with our partners in government, such as Brooklyn Public Library, President, President Linda Lip Johnson, and Council Member Allen, myself, uh, as, well, as well as our friends uh, at PS236, community stakeholders, and James Neal, President of the American Library Association. Libraries are a central part of our individual and community growth in New York City, as the resources they contain can help us contain, connect with, and learn from one another. This project delivered the Mill Basin Library a new HVAC system improving the internal condition of the library and providing a more comfortable experience for patrons. It also included installation of a new fire alarm system, upgrading the safety for all users and building management systems that communicate with Brooklyn Central Branch. I also want to thank a few folks from the DDC, uh, Commissioner, Acting Commissioner Anna Barrio, Deputy Commissioner Tom Foley, Executive Director Gus Kitaris, Program Director Sergio Vasquez, Deputy Program Director Antonio Spolatos, Deputy Program Director Davoud, uh, Senior Construction Project Manager Dorvin Garcia, uh, a and &E Director Isaac Benunu, and uh, one more person, Edwin Aranda, Mechanical Design Engineer. Also want to thank the, uh, the defenders, the contractor, Geometrics Services, and our PV Electrical. Thank you. Oscar. And now um, it's great for us to have the president of the American Library Association, James Neal, who says he's never been to Mill Basin before, but there's a first for everything. Don't usually have you on hand for these, so please say a few words. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I bring you uh, greetings and best wishes from the American Library Association. 
and the library workers of, of the nation and the world join you in celebrating this new refurbished facility here in Mill Basin. As Linda said, uh, the Brooklyn Public Library has been serving this community uh, at Mill Basin for over 75 years and for over 40 years uh, out of this facility. Uh, the facility is important. It's the reason we're here. It's the place that people will come. But we need to think about this as much more than a facility. It's the extraordinary resources that will be accessible to people, the technologies, uh, the important programs that will be offered and services. But most important, I think, is the extraordinary staff, the expertise that will be available to the, to the citizens of Mill Basin as they want to access and use information. But it's more than that as well. Library, we also know, is an idea. It's an idea that everyone, anyone, can come into this space, use its facilities, use its services, use its staff. We don't ask who you are. We don't ask where you're from. We just want you to be able to access and use information. Uh, it's important that we respect that privacy and that accessibility of information to all people. It's where ch parents will bring their children to develop a love of reading. It's where people will come to look for jobs, to use technology, to access the vast world of information. It's where health information and legal information and government political information will be available to everyone. This is a special space. It's a learning space. It's a collaborative space. It's a safe space. And I think that's what's so important about celebrating uh, this library. Uh, George Bernard Shaw, the Irish playwright, was opening a new play in London. And he wrote a letter to Winston Churchill saying, Mr. Churchill, I have a new play in London which is opening, and I'm sending you two tickets. One ticket is for you, Mr. Churchill, and one ticket is for a friend, if you have one. Oh, well, Mr. Churchill had to quickly reply. Uh, dear Mr. Shaw, unfortunately, I have another commitment on the opening night of your new play, but I would be very appreciative if you sent me two tickets to the second night's performance, if there is one. Uh, <laughs> library of the future. Will there be one? This is evidence of the continuing relevance, importance, impact, and success that libraries play in our community. I applaud the Brooklyn Public Library, I applaud the Millbank community, and thank you for delivering this extraordinary facility, its content, its services, and its staff to all the people of our city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. I didn't have the exchange between Churchill and George Bernard Shaw in my notes, but everything else? <laughs> Spot on. Um, you know, we talk a lot about the fact that libraries are the most democratic institutions in our society. Um, we feel it passionately more these days than ever. Um, and so we're more, uh, I think, impassioned about making sure that every branch is open and functioning um, as many days a year as possible. And it's part of why we are so thankful uh, to be here today, but in particular because some of our most important patrons appear to be lined up with something to share with us. Can we please welcome some first and second graders from PS2 Booth? Thank you. Let's, let's turn it around and show it to the crowd. 